I just recorded most of an episode without uh, having OBS open. I just just thought I'd talk to myself for half an hour about what was going on in the Imperium Roman. And welcome back to, of course, the adventures of Julius Nepos, or as he is known now, Imperator Augustus Bigger Stickers. We are currently, our goal to tidy things up is to put a horse on the throne of China, something I've never done before, and I thought that'd be pretty interesting. Now, a lot of you have been asking me, with uh, all the money and all the power we've got to tidy up the borders, and I agree, because looking at it, it's a little bit of a mess, isn't it? So... I'd say we tied it the rest of Africa, seeing as it won't take too long to pretty much get all of this under Rome. Like, it, it's only going to be a few walls at most, seeing as they are quite, uh, you know, like single counties here. We've got some that just have duchies. So that wouldn't be too difficult. I say take the rest of the UK as well, just because that would be, um, I feel like that'd be kind of nice. You know, just because it, it looks like a bit of an eyesore here with Alba and, and Ireland fighting over what's left of it. We might as well, you know, usurp true Roman dominance over, over those filthy barbarians. Then, of course, Germania is absolutely a mess. So, I say we conquer... What do we think? Um, maybe everything south of... No, why, why did we take all the way up to Denmark? Um, take most of continental Europe here. Take Germania uh, pretty much all the way down. We'll, we'll sort of draw a line across the continent here, south of whatever this river is called here. Uh, the, the Vistula. We'll take everything south of that and make mainland Europe look like a lovely powerhouse. Meanwhile... Uh, while we're waiting for, obviously, our claims and our our truces to expire over here, we can keep pushing along. We're trying to get to this province here so we can launch an incursion into China via India. Not sure how it works. It's going to be pretty interesting, though. This is one of, one of the game mechanics. I literally have no idea how it works. So that would be kind of cool. So why don't we start with Africa? Once we're done with Africa, we'll head up to the UK. Once we're done with the UK, we'll tidy up Germania all the way up to uh, Denmark here. We won't bother going to Scandinavia itself. But we will take this uh, Danish peninsula just to sort of say, hey... Stay out. This this is ours now. This is Rome, if you don't mind. And I think that'll look kind of nice. And then, obviously, alongside that, I'll be focusing on this. Maybe after that stage, we could take the uh, Arabian Peninsula here. Tidy up a bit of Persia during next episode. You let me know what you think. This this series is guided by you lovely folk at home now. You know, ever since we took Rome, it's sort of been a bit of a toss of what we do anyway. But I, I do like the horse on Chinese throne goal that we've got going here. So I've got a lot of things to tidy up by the looks of it. We've got apparently betrothed command. We've got nomad agitation because we don't have... Um... Oh, shit. All of that is under nomad agitation? Really? Um, oh, just talky. Hey, just show me talky then. There we go. Right, so we actually need to build a um, a holding here of some description. So you can have a castle because I'm feeling generous. Uh, what other province was it? It was this one here. So you can have a castle as well because I'm feeling generous. So that's those ones dealt with. Talky and Pareshin. Done. Children like an education focus. You can be trained in uh, thrift because it's the best one. Those are character actions. We've got negotiate with raiders. Sure, why not? He wants uh, Gorisum, which is under Despot Justinian. Going to annoy just Despot Justinian by minus 60 and annoy all of our other vassals. Or we can just marry him off. So yeah, we'll just marry him off instead then. Problem solved. Right, we then also got to draw claims on Africa, which is lucky. So I said that's obviously what we're going for next. And Crimea as well. We want to have a holding domain. We've got... Oh, this must be what we literally just conquered. Right, Turan. Uh, what is du jour Turan? There's actually just those five provinces. Shit. Okay, so I'm going to give that to a fresh vassal then just to keep that nice and tidy. Let's go for uh, filter one, if you don't mind. We'll search my realm as well. Right, Marius. Grant landed title. What's the province called? Ba Bamian? Bamian? Sure, there you go. Pretty sure that was the name of the demon kid in uh, in the Omen, wasn't it? What else have we got? We've got uh, minor titles, which are obviously going to take me about 15 hours because there's a whole bunch of titles here to deal with. Actually, way too many. Uh, so I'll do that in a second without needing to record that. Because I don't think anybody wants to sit there for half an hour watching me give out titles. This guy is apparently plotting against us. I don't really care unless it's actually trying to kill me. Nah, I don't care. I want to keep Righteous Imprisonment on just in case it allows us to get rid of some trouble, some vassals easily. Uh, Unlanded Sons. Fair enough. I mean, I could definitely give those the next land that we get. We've actually got a castle in Constantinople there. So here you go. Grand Landed Title. The uh, Barony. The Castle of... Um, Blackene, Blach, Blacherne, whatever. Here you go. Right, that's one son dealt with. We've got Antonius. We've got... Oh, shit. One with a horse. Did you see that? Oh, no. Constans might be the one we put on the throne then. Because that will also convert the whole of China. Because the way it works is it's all cultural, culturally based. Depending on who rules China. That's it. There's no, like, you don't have to wait for cultural conversion or anything. It's just whoever sat on the throne. That becomes the new culture of China. So if you put this kid on, who is horse culture. And obviously looks a little bit like a horse hybrid there. Uh, China will immediately convert. And obviously the Protector General, when he dies, will spawn in as a horse, which I think will be fucking great. So, we'll leave it, that kid around then, just to try and pot the throne. Because I think by the time we get there, that kid will still be alive. Um, we won't worry about that too much, domain too big. Yeah, what have we got then that we shouldn't have? Oh, we're just unmarried. 
No, we are. Oh, we're betrothed. Right, and how old is she? Three. Fuck. Um, uh, gonna break betrothal. Sorry. Goodbye. Right, we want to find just any old wife who is actually of age, then she'll do. Why not? Might as touch, brawny, shrewd, diligent, patient, chaste, kind, perfect. Done. Welcome aboard the Emperor Train. Next stop, you. Fulfilled ambition to get married. Thank you. So that should fix our... Yep, we fixed our domain limit there. We're still over our vassal limit. That will take 30 seconds. Find love. And then we can express a romantic interest in our spouse. I like that button. That's a really good button that should be in the base game. So it just makes life so much easier, doesn't it? Rather than it being completely random. We've got a lot of duchies to make as well. Arabia Magna, Iberia. We've got Beth Gamai. And then we've got a lot of titular titles as well. So I'll do that one in a second. Then we'll get on with the conquests. Wow, okay, so we had a follow-up to that Robin Hood event one episode later, apparently. It's a trap. My sheriff and I discussed what we should do about the outlaws and came up with two ideas. Every man and woman who had been harassed by these bandits, including the sheriff, have been told about the leader's skill with a bow. An archery contest might lure him out of his beloved forest. Another option would be to use a disguise to find the villain and bring him to court. Um, an archery contest seems like a pretty good idea. Or a clever disguise, and apparently we can't trait patient? Uh, yeah, alright, why not? I've never done this one before, and I've done the archery contest, so I'll do the clever disguise instead then. So we are going to gain the trait patient, gain 10 prestige, and, uh, I don't know if we ourselves are going to disguise ourselves to go and hunt down Robin Hood. Sorry, of this mysterious man. Um, or whether or not we're sending someone else. No, I removed my beautiful foot fur linen cloaks and reluctantly eased myself into a peasant's stinking clothes. A woolen tunic, a small hat, and muddy boots completed my disguise. Now, my own ma wouldn't even recognize me. Um, do we have a Mar? We did have a Mar. Marcellus Marcellinus. Let's see how this works. 33% chance of success. Or we lose a trait deceitful and gain the trait slothful because we don't think it's, it's fitting. Let's do it. This guy's revealed. 33% chance of stumbling upon the merry men or 33% chance of a stranger in green. Okay, uh, we fell in love with our wife. Well, that solved that one. Nice. Um, and this is the last one. Ready in peace. My stomach growled louder than the wolves, howling in the distance. My search for the lawless men had taken me farther into the forest than I'd imagined it would. Just a couple of hours had passed since I broke my fast, but it felt like days. I kept walking and reached a small brook. As I bent down for a drink, I heard laughter and a faint voice of many people coming towards me. Before I could hide, they were upon me. Wink. After a thorough investigation, where I pretended to be a naive or downright stupid, they allowed me to follow them to their camp. Run away now, bye. Outfoxed by the merry men. Or, we say, ha hello, meet the merry men. Hello, merry men. As I approached their hideout, songs and laughter of people talking reached my ears. It was more of a small village hiding beneath up in the trees than a lawless gang's lair. Women cooked, tended to children, and babbled with men who practiced their skills with bows and swords. A woman clothed in green and skilled as any man with a bow caught my eye, but before I could approach her, I was introduced to their leader, who seemed restless, and asked me hundreds of questions. In order to gain their trust, I had to prove myself to him and his gang. Really? Steal from the rich and give to the poor? Let's see what adventures we can find. Adventure ahead. This is enough. Um, everybody gains, um, an opinion of me because I basically caught them and know what they're up to. Or, this is as far as I dare take it, we lose 81 gold and basically we're revealed and the highway robber band appears in the country. Um, let's see what adventure we can find. Adventure ahead. Absolutely, Imperator Augustus. I feel like you've deserved a personal adventure. Adventure. I insisted that Leader and I would go for an adventure together without any of the other merry men. They grumbled a bit, but silence was... But was silenced by the leader, who thought it would be an excellent idea. As we walked down the road, we saw a man clad in horse skin, leaning against a tree. It was my son, literally clad in horse skin. I wanted to confront the horseman myself, but the stubborn leader did not listen. We talked to the horseman. I was attacked and tied to the tree by one of my own sheriffs. The leader of the merry men returned, saw me tied to the tree, and killed my sheriff before he cut my ropes. Oh no. So we were caught, and apparently not recognised, as uh, the emperor, the highest rank in Wome. Uh, but... Thankfully, Robin Hood, I assume this is, uh, freed us. Arrest the leader of the Merry Men. Now what? Betray the Merry Men. This was fun. Leave the Merry Men. Time to leave and leave them alone. Ah, so we just gained martial prestige, general opinion, because we met the Merry Men. Leave the Merry Men, betray the Merry Men, arrest the leader of the Merry Men. No, you know what? I feel like Imperator Julius is a changed man. This has been a fun adventure, and he's seen, you know what? They're not bad people. They're just trying to make their way out there in the world. Martial plus three, intrigue plus three, general opinion plus three... For the next um, five years. Oh, that's not very good. This was fun. Leave the Merry Men. Now what? Betray the Merry Men? Oh, I don't know. Uh, this has gone too far. Arrest the leader of the Merry Men. Now, we'll say now. Nah, I don't want to betray them. This was fun. See if anything happens now. Oh, there we go. I slunk away from the Merry Men after having had adventures. Venison and flirted with the green-clad maid. 
I had great fun together with the outlaws and feel no need to try and change their ways as long as their shenanigans do not affect me. They seem rather harmless, content to hide in their forest and occasionally robbing someone who will not suffer from losing a little gold. Fare thee well. We met the merry men. That's kind of nice. That's a cool little event chain there. I've never had that outcome for it before. So you can have the archery contest and actually catch the uh, the leader of the merry men. But I've never done that one. So that's that's very cool. Oh shit, we've still got the bubonic play kicking around, have we? Is it still here? Oh, come on. Um, we gain a strong claim on the county of Samatata. Where is Samatata? Um, this one all the way... Oh, shit, that's the one into China. 4,000 gold? Oh, owie. That's a lot of gold. Um, um no, not for 4,000 gold. Not we can just declare war on, on this province and take it anyway, so maybe not. Plus, we'd have to declare war on the Western Protectorate either way, so I don't really mind. Right then. Do, what do we have against you before we start turning up the borders? Let's just see if we can do anything in Persia. Nope. We've got to wait another four years before we can do anything in Persia. So I say, let's start tidying up Africa. All right. So there's one province tidy up. Only another 600 more to go. Well, the thing about what we're doing now is that our vassals generally beat us too. Unfortunately, grabbing some of these provinces here. They're in a bit of a stalemate as well. I have no idea how. With this one province ruled by a 14-year-old girl. What are you guys doing? So what I'm doing is having a more permanent force basically garrisoned in certain parts of the world. So these guys are going to sort of maintain Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. I'm sending another 20k men, or well, they would be if they'd reinforced, to the uh, basically just deal with the western side of the map. So we'll try and take the rest of Africa down here. They can also keep an eye on, you know, Hispania and maybe even Gaul if that's necessary. I'm also sending two smaller retinues that I haven't quite reinforced either. So that one's going to be 8,600. This one's going to be 1,000 pounds. So that one is about another 10k men up into Britain as well, just to try and uh, solidify our borders here, tidy things up. Our vassals are doing a good job, but we can definitely expedite the process. Once they're done up there, we'll move them back out into Germania to go and tidy up the rest of this absolute state here. And then honestly, I think we're doing all right. Now, when I get enough gold, we've got plenty of retinue cap. I will create a whole other retinue for maintaining peace in Persia, conquesting out, that type of thing. Excellent. And now we can launch yet another conquest. This is going to be a very slow conquest of Northern Africa. He's got a lot of independent provinces, and unfortunately, we've only got, um, as it stands right now, we've only got conquests. We could try and claim it for somebody else. In fact, that might not be a bad idea. So what we can do is, if we say conquest, basically anywhere. So what about this one here? Um, if we conquest Darek, land this dude with Darek, and then push his claim on the whole kingdom, he should re remain our vassal then. So that's basically the best method that we're going to have to do this. If it works, that will give us a shit ton of land very easily. Oh shit, are we... These retinues are costing me a little bit of money. Holy shit. Now the issue is, obviously they're quite large sized retinues, so I might split them up a little. And then we'll, uh... We'll try and continue the conquest this way, because basically uh, the other retinue, sh which was probably left by now... Yeah, so these guys were able to hit their capital and deal with their troops very quickly. But once these troops are a bit more split up and these boys are down in uh, Africa a little bit more, down in the Sub-Saharan Africa, it's going to be a lot more difficult to hit these. So let's split them up so we can save our money and speed these down walls up. Thank you very much. Right, so the conquest of uh, West Africa here shouldn't, in theory, take too long, seeing as a lot of them are still single county uh, rulers, which would be quite nice for us to speed things along. Yeah, this dude, Duke, but single county again. 8,000 troops is more than enough. They've only got 700 men each. So we've got 10 times their men. It's going to cost me a little bit more, obviously, to... to oh, we don't want to marry her off to uh, a revolt there. Let's marry her off to him. It's going to be a lot more expensive to obviously have two armies basically both being attrition down at the same time, but honestly, and both assaulting as well. But honestly, what else are we going to spend our gold on at this stage? Minus 31 gold per month. It's up and down. Um, it really is. And we want to give these lands away to somebody we've already got so that we're not going way above our vassal limit again. What is this? Uh, Uadan. Now, I need to point out, and I see this comment so much, and I'm going to bring it up again. I think I brought it up last episode. If these things here, so if bureaucracy says plus 10 vassal limit, that's not going to give us plus 10 vassal limit because you have to take into account what the last one gives you as well because we're losing this but gaining this. So if this one's giving us plus 10 vassal limit and we're losing it and this one gives us plus 10, we're breaking even because we're losing 10 but gaining 10. So changing up to the highest level of bureaucracy isn't going to help. Changing up centralization as well. Say, say for example, uh, medium centralization to high centralization doesn't give us plus three. It just gives us plus one because we already have the plus two from this one. Just to try and explain it so that people get it. Because I see this comment every episode saying you need to change your bureaucracy. Why don't you change your, bu your bureaucracy? It won't help. Like You just got to take my word for it. If we switch over, it won't help. It would just make things a little bit worse because obviously... You know, we lose Zoodle Vassal opinion and Max Levy. I don't really care about that. I want to keep their opinion on side. So that if we go above our Vassal limit and our Domain limit, they're less likely to obviously attack us because they like us more. Now, we could change marginal status of women, but that's about all we can take in terms of laws. Like, there are no other laws worth taking 
at all. Uh, we could go over to Imperial Administration, but that's going to take quite a while. Um, what needs must be true does not have the government bureaucratic, so we can't even switch over to uh, Imperial Admin either. Because I saw that comment as well, saying why don't you switch over to Imperial. We can't. It's just because we already have a sort of Roman Empire equivalent law. And that was supposed to, uh, that was added by Paradox to represent sort of the Byzantine Empire. I mean, it's not relevant for us because we're already way beyond it with the bureaucracy government. So, pretty sure that also gives us uh, vassal, vassal size, doesn't it? I oh, know it actually doesn't. It's domain size. Yeah, no, you are right in the sense that Imperial will be much, much better for us in that sense, but we just can't get it because we are bureaucratic, unfortunately. Thank you very much. Success. Pharaoh Tariq II was smothered by a pillar. So that's the guy up here in Garamantes here. So what we want to do then, I have landed that other dude. Like I said, I would. We have got uh, Chief Af Afalke of Darek with a claim on the Pharaoh of Garamantes. So what we'll do is we will declare war, and in theory, he will become our vassal. Well, he's already a vassal. So, he will just gain all that land, and in turn, he will rule it for us. So, this seems to be a win-win as far as I'm concerned. So, let's send the troops up there. Uh, you guys head to the capital. We'll just get these boys to carpet siege all the way up to the capital, which should be done in no time. Now, with these troops, uh, we're going to send them into Mali. Now, it turns out Africa is actually much more lucrative than I thought. I took uh, this province here, and we got a modifier. I don't know if there it is. Lucrative salt mines of Ijil. Ijil is a major salt mining site in West Africa. So... I suppose that's how they've balanced Africa somewhat, so it's more resource-rich and less exploited, uh, just to counteract the fact that you're playing as kind of a low-economy states here. Right, so we'll take out... Um, what about you first? We'll go to declare war. We'll take uh, this one, if you don't mind. So we'll send half the army that way, and then we'll send half the army down into Mali as well. Why don't we take uh, Ghana here so, to actually give us a stepping stone into these other couple of provinces? Nice. Painting the map our colour. Although this does kind of make sense as well. That I would kind of like to take the whole of Africa. We're basically going to have done it in these in these three wars as well. Which is pretty cool. Oh, this is interesting. The invention of Greek fire. The Greek fire, famous for its role it played in defending the... Uh, defending? Defending the Romans, right. Was invented by architect Kalinkus of Heliopolis. Who was a Greek-speaking Jewish refugee from the city of Baalbek who had fled the Arab conquest of Syria. Greek fire was used extensively by the Eastern Roman Empire in the 7th century. Well, that's us. Um, well, sort of. Initially, the defense against it, uh, an Arab fleet blockade in Constantinople, blah, 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 well kept secret. Right. Does that do anything for us? I don't think so. I don't think that does anything. I think that was just a little bit of a, uh, flavor text there. Kind of nice, though. Kind of cool little mods. Uh, little, little mods. Kind of cool little additions to the mod there. Now, back to the important stuff, rather than Greek fire. Seeing as I don't think we need to worry about, you know, defending against anyone at this stage. We've got... What are we doing? 82% in this one, in Ghana. And I've actually just sent the troops up, the other army, into Ireland as well. So we can help sort of speed things up with these wars. So why don't we go ahead and... Uh, ooh. Oh, I'm bankrupt. Right, I see. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we've apparently also got this one still. So I need to give that one away. Grant landed title. Here, you can have... Um, what was it called? Chit. There you go. Enjoy that one. What else have we got? We got that Adam... Oh, why did I not give that one away? Adam Guist Tribe. It's not on the list. It's not on the list, Captain. What do we do? Um, that's that's annoying. I imagine it's because we're in the middle of a war and it's siege down. So uh, we'll deal with that one in a second. Now these won't take five minutes to deal with, so I'll tidy those up. And then this is the big one. This is obviously the major one. How long until our troops are over there? Then ages, basically decades. So we'll just keep sieging, I guess. Hey, there we go. One major battle later, and in theory, this should all be glorious Roman p p purple, pink. I don't know what color that is. But it actually is. Holy shit, look at that. That looks so good. Let's tidy up the rest of Africa. And they've actually picked up the rest of the Horn of Africa here as well. We should really start going back with the actual goal of the series at this point. So I actually can't move on Ireland because apparently I've signed a non-aggression pact. I don't remember doing that, but apparently I did. Uh, so why don't we go for Scotland instead. Uh, Alba. What have you guys got? Just general conquests on him again. Have we got any claimants we can maybe get to court? Yes, we do. Um... Actually, we've got a lot we can pick from. Some won't, some will. Let's get, uh, you know what you'll do. You're 19 years old, invite to court, welcome aboard. Blessings upon you, Murkatak. I don't think that's how you pronounce that. So we need to actually get him some land up here, the same as we did with uh, with Northern Africa there, just to start off with. Let's steal, uh, what is this one? Fife, we'll take Fife, and I'd say steal. I mean, apprehend, liberate Fife from these uh, filthy druidic barbarians. I give it to this dude, and then we should be good. I should have marked him as special interest. Where is he? Um, da -da 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 -da. There he is, right. Mark as special interest, because you've got a claim on... Oh, he's got his claim on Ireland and Scotland. Well, that would make our lives a lot easier if we can push both claims for him. And we actually can as well, if I can find a way to break that damn non-aggression pact as well. 
So we're back at war with the rest of Northern Africa here because I have a dude with a claim on the rest of it. This kingdom here, the Pharaoh of Tue Regia. Sure, that one. Um, basically just the rest of the blue provinces that we don't have there. So I'm trying to take a blame for him. Um, obviously land him and, and get him the rest of the title as we were doing before. So we need to kill off, um, whoever the King of Scotland is because we're at truce with him. Yeah, let's kill off the King of Scotland next and hopefully we can then push the claim for this dude for Ireland and Scotland. And that'll be this dealt with and Africa dealt with in basically two wars. Not ideal, but that's okay. Success, he was caught in a deadly arrow crossfire between the Scroll Depository and the Grassy Knoll. He is dead. Right, so what we can do now then is if we say right click on Alba, declare war, been a non-aggression pact. Oh, he's married to my damn daughter. Seriously? And I can't kill her either? Oh, she's my daughter, right. Oh, that's really annoying. Um, what about Ireland? Can we go to war with Ireland at least? Let me guess, we're in a non-aggression pact, shit. Um, screwed myself a little bit then, haven't I? Okay, uh, you need to die in that case. 45% plot power. Damn, your dad was much easier to kill off. Right, where's my spy master these days? Let's bring you home. Send you into... Oh, god damn it. Why did I... Ah, bamboozled again. Normally, Gallery is the capital, so that's not entirely my fault. Right, okay. Let's carry on with Africa instead. Ooh, he's surrendering very early there. 84%, thank you. Now, it was only for one county, so it's not like we're uh, completely set. So what we do is we give this one... We give Eid a Tide. We give this to this dude. There you go, my friend. And then we kill off the king and take whatever is left. 56%. God damn it. Problem solved. Oh, wait. There's another problem, though. He follows a different team to me. I'll enlighten him. Good but bad. What a shame. Okay, thank you, Spy Master. I had to fire my help when I get a new one. Let's give ourselves... Where is it? Claim? 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 Sorry? Uh, what? Excuse me, sir. We claim on the... Yeah, but, like, I actually want to press that, though. Claim. Huh. Bamboozled? Well, that's annoying. Um, claimants? Why is that? Maybe we, we need a strong claim, but I don't think so. Weak claim, weak claim, weak claim, weak claim. Oh, god damn it. Okay, I was hoping it would be actually just as easy as that. I'm sure our vassals can deal with that. Okay, back to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa then. What have we got? We've got this dude. Have we been to war with you? Yes, we have. We've got this kid. Have we been to war with you? Yes, we have. Mali? Uh, how about you? Yep, you're the same dude. And no. Oh, god damn it. He's going to come to a standstill. Now, non-aggression pact and truces. Right, okay, back to Persia in that case. What have we got? We must be able to declare war on you guys again. Surely. Yes, okay. So what do we need to do? We need to conquest. Oh my god, do they have a border? They don't. Oh, you prick. So we need to take that one in. either way, so it doesn't really matter that much. We'll take, uh, what's this province? Kapul? Sure, we'll take Kapul. Where's our closest army? Oh my god, actually Northern Africa. Alright, off we go. Just as the army arrive in Persia, we're ready to go to war with Africa again. God damn it. Okay, well that's fine. Right, so what we've got to do then is take this province. That will get us into India. And then we should be able to get some decent progress across India today as well. So let's go ahead and take, uh, which one do we want? Kap yeah, we want Kapul there. Right, I think with 20,000 men we should be good, but I am going to split this army too, just so we don't get so many losses. Then he goes back to the capital, and we will have to check the religion map in a minute as well, see how far the Hellenic faith has spread. See if it's caught on a little bit in uh, in Africa and in Germania. Right, 25% already, that's not too bad. Hang him, that'll teach him a lesson. I don't know, don't know who he was, but uh, I'm all up for hanging anybody we can. Um... I decided to tour Rome to receive my adulation of my subjects, but as the open carriage took a turn past the scroll depository, I suddenly heard the whizzing sound of an arrow flying mere inches from my head. Did that come from the grassy knoll? Um, somebody's trying to have me assassinated, are they? Right. We don't know who it is. You come back to the capital and sort things out. Who the fuck is trying to kill me? Could be him. Well, you can have a gift. Could be him. You can have a gift. Could be him. You have a gift. <laughs> God damn it. This is about the only way we could lose this campaign is if we get shot in the damn head. Um, here, let's go ahead and sort that out. Now, it could be our courtiers as well, so I do need to keep a close eye on that. Hmm. Not a big fan of whoever's trying to kill me, I'll be honest with you. 100%. Thank you very much. And there is our headway into India acquired. Now, we need to tidy this up as well at some stage in, in Persia because it's an absolute state. Right. The Honey Revolt is right there, ready for the picking. That's great for us because we can just dive in there and take it without needing to hiccups, please. Without needing to worry about obviously, you know, killing them off and going to war again because this revolt will probably be ended when we uh, 
when we actually kill all his troops. So let's actually send you after the troops to help with our war score. Um, with this army back here, we can siege the war goal and their capital, or their de facto capital. And we should be good to go. Um, now, we don't, didn't get any claims on India in the end because they were way too expensive. They're like 4,000 gold per claim. Well, we can just go to war for it anyway. And a lot of it's under the Western Protectorate as well. So it's going to be a, a pain in the ass no matter what we do here, unfortunately. Right. Uh, she must learn on her own. I agree. What do you want? Yep, whatever. What do you want? Yep, whatever. And you? Yep, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's take this one out. Tell me we can get this one at least. Because that would be really, really useful. What do you want? Good lord, have I not got a, a head marriage of a, a officiorium or something? It's unbelievable. Why do you have to message the emperor himself about these things? Okay, so now we got to wait for this war to end. So let's pull you boys back out into that uh, into that northern border. Now let's go and take a look how the empire is doing elsewhere. My god, Africa looks so much better, doesn't it? It's nice purple color. I don't like that our name is here of all places. I don't like that. But besides that, we're doing pretty well. Now why don't we tidy up the rest of... Scotland. What about Scotland? Can we declare war on you now? You're married to my, my wife, of course, yeah. Uh, what about this dude, though? Declare war? Conquest? We could just conquest him. Ah, oh, thanks. Sweet. That worked out really well. Alright, continuing on. We've pretty much tidied up most of Africa at this stage. I'll just show you very briefly what we've done. Look at this. Western Africa. We've just finished the campaigns. Everyone's pulling out. We've got this little bit in uh, northern, the northern Sahara there to deal with, which won't take too long. I've started to work on Ireland as well. We've taken Ulster. Because unfortunately we're still in that non-aggression pack, which is why I've got a plot against my son-in-law here. Um, the borders are looking so nice, aren't they? And we've actually conquered some more of Germania too. That's, that's my vassals doing that. They're less of me doing it. They've started to move into uh, all the provinces around the Black Sea there and up along the Caspian. Up along the Caspian Sea. I knew that one. I, I was just... Uh, <clears throat> yep, definitely knew that one. So um, I guess there's nothing left to do now besides head to China. Unless, you know, there's more borders I suppose we could tidy up. Again, I, I said I wanted to take Germania. Is that much point? Honestly, nobody can stop us, and it's all about just painting the map at this stage anyway, so um, we might as well go for the ultimate goal of China and uh, and wrap it up there. Now, are we going to be able to do it in the in the sort of two days left after this video? Maybe. going to be difficult. Again, I've never fought China before, so I don't know the, the type of difficulty that we're going to be expecting with that. Whether or not their troops spawn here, or whether or not we have to sp send troops to China. I, like I said, I honestly don't know how it works. Um, it should be pretty interesting, though. And, and seeing the buffs it gives you as well, that'd be kind of nice. So I know for future campaigns, say playing in India, whether or not it's worth, you know, trying to grab China for some sort of world conquest conquest run. Not entirely sure. Anyway, um, I suppose we're just carpet sieging here now, aren't we? What do you want? Oh, hang on. Alba, not today. Uh, there you go. You can have her instead. Almost fell for that again. I need to be more careful with who I'm giving non-aggression packs to, especially if they're people in our sort of war path. Yeah, sure, we'll play some war games. Why not? May the best warlord win. Um... At the beginning of the war game, the enemy quickly tries to advance up the hills and get a strategic advantage. Rush forward, rush forward with a light skirmish before their force reaches the hill. Sure, why not? Unlightness man. Um, try to flank the enemy with your main force. Good game. We 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 lost. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I don't know much about Warhammer, especially not medieval Warhammer. Hang him, because <laughs> we're arbitrary. We could just hang the thieves. That's pretty good. What a nice place to live. Right now, this dude has to die, but obviously we've got to deal with uh, the King of Alba first. Just have succeeded with that plot then, I didn't even realise. Well, that's fine. Um, we are going to have to conquest province to province, though, because my whole uh, Kingdom Inheritance plan wasn't working quite to plan. Uh, what's a gallery? Why not? Where are my troops? Hey, uh, do you want to head up? You're in the wrong part of the wrong part of the UK there. Romulus thinks that I gave the thief a subtle punishment. A suitable punishment. I was going to say, it's not really subtle, hanging a man. That's probably more or less enough good conquest for today. We'll tidy up this war and then we'll get ready to uh, assassinate whoever's the current, you know, leader of that province in India that we want to grab. Uh, hopefully, Africa will tidy itself up, you know, while we're up here, you know, dealing with our own problems. Because is it really worth it to try and scurry around Africa for those five provinces that the, what will naturally get to us anyway? Probably not. So, the UK is almost done. That was one of the goals that we'll set out. Germania, we have expanded into somewhat. And obviously all of Western Africa there is ours. Most of Northern Africa and all of Eastern Africa as well. We've cut a nice swath through Persia. That is a horrible colour. Holy shit, look how bright that is. Ugh. Um, all we've got to do now is move along the Himalayas and head to China. Thank you for watching. Shout out to Big Dick Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Holting, Haydog, Croesus, Gabriel Mendes, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Michael Modern, Logan Thorne, Conspired C, James Ogilvy, Escape, Jackson Women and Tyler Birch. For all their support at the insane level tiers of Patreon, more important than ever now that YouTube has... Uh, <coughs> 
ignored the channel, shall we say. Shout out to Nathaniel Lindbergh, Brandon Matonet, Necro Finland, Felix Dale, Prince of Circle of the Dragon, Nick, Noble S, Quet Lachley, Zara Even, Fagundo Vasquez, Paul Master, Imperator Augustus, Jack Allen, Chancellor Sheen Palpatine, I'm the Lizard King, Llewellyn Thomas, Euron DeVries, UFTs, Duncan Conley, 2 and 7, Jordan Camel, Astro, Sedini, Joseph Pierre, and Chris, for their support of the more sensible tiers. Thank you. I'll see you um, in the penultimate episode next episode, I guess.